jump into the meat of my video. I wanted to share it's part of a taco playlist. Leanne has two channels. They are both linked below, but she is the lovely hostess of this. I am also going to link the playlist below, so make sure if you see how I make taco meat, you check out lots of recipes. Hey, it's Jackie, and I'm excited to share with you one of my favorite tips for the kitchen. First of all, let me just get it out of the way. I love anything that has to do with tacos, taco salad, nachos, tostadas, that kind of food is my kind of food. It is my absolute favorite to eat. So I'm gonna share with you how I make taco meat, prep ahead of time, keep it in the freezer, and makes for really quick, very easy meals. And it also saves money because when you buy things in bulk, it tends to be a little less expensive than buying it on every single occasion. And you'll end up with taco meat that looks like this. Now this is quite a small bag. If I'm having tacos and we're filling with these, I'll make two bags. If I'm having nachos, I only need a single bag, and that's why I freeze them in smaller portions so that the meals where it's more of a topping, I can grab one bag, and if it's a filler, I can grab two. As my family's growing, I need to use more meat, and so I'm adjusting my portions, but that's the cool thing about prepping is that you can do whatever works for you. So I'm gonna share with you how I make taco meat beef in particular in bulk and then I freeze it and I hope that you get to do this in your kitchen because it's a time saver, it's a money saver and even though it's a lot of work up front, it's really pretty simple and you'll be thanking yourself every single residual meal that you get to use this meat. And I can pretty much promise you that if you do it one time and you use all that meat up, you'll probably look forward to restocking again, not for the work but for the reward. So the first thing that you do is get a ton of meat. I actually have about three pounds here and I am going to fry it up. I make it in different portions. Basically, whenever I find a good ground beef deal, I either buy a three pound tube of it or I buy it in individual packages like this. So I just work on chopping it up, flipping the meat from time to time. I have an extremely large skillet. It's like a skillet married a walk and had a love child. And I fry up all my my large portions of fried rice or taco meat or whatever I'm making in very large portions gets made in this pan. It has been well loved over the last 12 years as you can see, but it works really great for large preps like this. So the meat just keeps cooking down. I don't worry about getting it too small or grinding the beef too small yet because you'll see I have another step in the process that takes care of that, but I'm just making sure that the beef gets cooked all the way through. You get the idea. And I have never made this with ground turkey because my husband does not want to eat ground turkey or ground chicken, but I imagine that you could do this and freeze it exactly the same. I probably would use a more lean meat if he was agreeable, but we stick with beef because that's what he's always had. So again, I always make it with beef, but I'm sure you could do the same thing with turkey or chicken. And once you have your meat all browned and cooked, I add it into my food processor. I use the blade at the bottom. I don't use like a slicing blade up top, but this process is something that my mother-in-law has always done for my husband when he was a kid and his siblings. And it makes a very, as my husband says, Taco Bell-like meat. It just grinds it really small. And while it is an extra step, that is one of the reasons I like to prep it ahead of time. I don't have to do this every single time I make taco meat. I make it in large batches like this. And again, I do it anywhere from three pounds to four or five pounds. It, it really can be done with however much you can fit in the pan. And you can see how fine it made the ground meat compared to from the pan. And that's what my husband really likes. And it makes it easy to spread onto nachos or to put into tacos or to stuff in peppers. Whatever you're using it for, it makes it really easy. So I'm just continuing to get all of the meat ground. And once it's all done, I take it right back into the pan, which of course I do empty all the fat, the excess fat that remained from the pan first. And I dump it right back in. I do take the blade out, don't worry. no kids are harmed in the making of this video and since this was three pounds of beef at this point I am adding three packets of taco seasoning I know you can make your own taco seasoning but I actually just find for the price it's so easy to use taco seasoning that's pre-made and I take it as one of my shortcuts so I use the Aldi brand it's about 29 cents per packet I think and then I add the appropriate amount of water I always err on the side of too much water because when you have a little extra liquid, it's easy to defrost. 
So once it's all done, I do let it sit and cool, sometimes even overnight, to make sure it's easy to handle. So here is my three pounds of ground beef. I have made it, I have flavored it, we put it through the food processor, so it's Taco Bell-ish. And I put it in the fridge overnight so that it was nice and cool. I didn't have time to bag it last night, it was too hot before we had plans. So I'm gonna stick it in baggies and then it will go in the freezer. So now I have eight portions of ground beef that I can use for tacos, for nachos, for tostadas. I will stick these right in our deep freezer in the garage and when I'm ready to use them, I will pull them out the night before or I'll even have to do it on defrost if I forget last minute. I've even unwrapped one of these and stuck an entire cube right into a vegetable soup and made taco vegetable soup. So there's so many uses, but once I have it done, it makes for a really easy weeknight dinner. And since I told you it was so easy to use, I thought I'd give you a quick demonstration. We were out of town almost an entire day and decided to have a quick taco dinner. We we're having actually walking tacos. So I dumped my frozen log right in there and I just heat it up and it slowly starts to fall off and I just kind of rotate that frozen log. If I thought ahead of time, I would have put this in the fridge overnight the day before, but I didn't plan on making this. This was kind of last minute, but that's the wonderful thing about prepping your taco meat is it allows you to have something already made. You don't have to plan for it or have fresh beef or pull it. You don't have to pull it out the night before. It works well if you do, but I just constantly turn that lump and it slowly breaks down as you can see. And then within a few minutes, by the time I had all my toppings out, I made a melted cheese. I got lettuce, cilantro, green onions, by the time I got all of that stuff out, my meat was already cooked and I had a dinner available for my family. So here I am having the meat ready to add to walking tacos. I just put the pot out and my family can make their walking tacos as they want. So this is a dinner where we don't need a ton of meat. So I only used one log, but again, if I needed to, it really wouldn't have been a substantial amount of work to add in a second log. So. I really do like making the smaller portions. That way I can get exactly the amount of meat that my family needs without having too much. And if I ever need more, it's available. It's raining beef. Queso. I'm showing you this just because it is delicious. Do you already use this tip in your kitchen? If you have any other follow-on tips that are similar to this, go ahead and leave them in the comments so that other people can see them and learn from you. And I totally appreciate you guys checking this out. If you like food type videos, be sure to subscribe because every week I produce three videos and I go live on Fridays just to get to know my audience better. So I have grocery hauls with meal plans. I have $10 dinner ideas which share with you how I feed my family of five for $10 or less. And then I have these random videos that share tips, recipes, anything I want to share with you food related. So if you like to eat, if you need to eat or you want to eat, you need to watch my channel. Thank you so much for coming. See you guys.